So, you're gonna steal your no, slide. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with a game. Like, if, if people already know how to solve the problem, they can do it themselves without having manager to, like, you do this, to do that. And if that manager can look at the overview and maybe make it better, that would be a better job of the manager rather than like, go around and do that. So. And it's a lot more fun. Instead of him just telling you for like two minutes that uh, the manager is bad or whatever, you get to act it out, you get to uh, learn more. So, so go back and fire your manager. So uh, yeah, that's the, yeah. If you want to take away from this session, go back and fire your manager. Get <laughs> a little bit about us, I already mentioned that uh, we, uh, uh, I'm from the Australian side and he's from the uh, America side. Uh, I'm a designer and he's a developer. And we do work together uh, on, on on projects. Who's works? Just a little bit of sales. Um, <laughs> I know. Uh, the Thoughtwork is an international uh, software consultancy company. So we help people make software. We help people make good software. And. Uh, we are around the world. Uh, our closest uh, uh, office is from Cambodia is in Singapore, uh, and uh, we have a project in Thailand, which we will talk to you about shortly. We would like, like we we uh, uh, take pride in uh, being really really good at technical stuff. Uh, we write books. Uh, like the lead enterprise and building microservices is the one coming out this year. Anybody is building micro, uh, uh, microservices, as I experience design. We also do uh, technology radar every uh, uh, quarter, and that outlines the uh, goal. Uh, because we work with a lot of uh, clients, lots of technologies, we have uh, a short list of like what's the stuff that you want to use right now, what's the stuff that's on trial or, 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 or assess and what's the stuff that you might not want to touch at this point in time. So do go check that out. But today we're not going to talk much about technical. This stuff. is not a technical talk. <laughs> Even though it's not a technical chat, it is not a technical talk. <laughs> we do take pride in being technical though, even though I am not technical. Let's get right to it. So, Yam Commercial Bank, anybody have heard about that before? No? One, two, three. Well, anybody heard? Cambodian Commercial Bank. Cambodian Commercial Bank? Yes. Yes? Okay, good. It's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know you can do that. If you just Yam Commercial Bank, just, go, just call it Cambodian Commercial Bank, unless. <laughs> so, um, we are embedded into the digital banking team, doing uh, web banking, mobile app, mobile payment, that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if uh, Cambodian commercial bank actually has an app. Do they have an app? Not yet. Okay. This is their vision. Do you know what that means? Use them themselves and make their clients happy. Um, anybody has any inkling on what's happening in the finance world at the moment? Fintech. Yeah, fintech. What this show is that this is a actually this my fancy fancy. There we go. Wow, this is my first time. Uh, this is the uh, website. Uh, of a, a welfare, which is a bank, of a bank. And you can see that at every single portion of that website, there's a startup for it. You go wealth management, you go loans, you go home, uh, uh, home mortgage, uh, insurance, all of that has a startup for it. So the bank are under threat, under a lot of threat right now. 
and they, they will not survive. And even by Starbucks coffee, they have their own payment system in the US, so they already eat up the portion of the bank's income already. So bank get people trying to get their business everywhere. Anybody been to Thailand? Have you been to 7-Elevens? Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that 7-Elevens, you can pay bills? And that's like over 80% shares of bills are paid at 7-Elevens, not banks. That's insane. Uh, 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 people from Japan would, uh, would be familiar with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are eating up EGMs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So, SCB is in a big trouble right now. And uh, this is from Lean Enterprise. Uh, anybody heard of Lean Startup? Yeah. Yep. So uh, there's a book called Lean Enterprise coming out earlier this year as well, like from uh, Bobworks. In it, there's a Horizon um, concept. That's like your investment, right? Your product to have to be a portfolio. You, if you rely on just one product to survive, you will die. Your company will die. What you would want is to have a product that makes you money right now. That's Horizon One. Products that you are investing in in order to make money in the near future, three to five years, or one to three years, sorry. And then the one that you have to do, to uh, that, that the one that you have to invest in, you know, uh, that's your innovation part that you that you can uh, hours in the long term. That's what SCB is thinking. SAP cannot rely on just banking anymore, right? They need to have a balanced portfolio in order to survive. To give you some example, like Fortune 500 companies, they used to be 100 years old, but now they, their time is charting into like 15, 20 years old because of this uh, disruption. For example, um, a Kodak team, they are the first one to invent the digital camera, but they didn't want to uh, disrupt their market, so they keep saying same theme and ignore about digital camera. And if you look at it now today, it's gone. not product anymore. It's gone. Um, um, Blockbuster, the 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 DVD rental in the US, um, they ignore the Netflix, which is the online streaming video totally. And once they realize, they're gone. The example of the good company that. Uh, trying to disrupt themselves, uh, Amazon. They were selling books, they were selling CDs, and then they invented uh, Kindle. They invented online stream because they know that like people will change the way that they consume the media. If they don't do it, someone else will do it for them, and that's why SCB they try to disrupt themselves because they don't want someone to kill them. So that's the goal, right? So that's the goal. We, they want to build new teams with new ways of work in order for them to be the change agent to scale in order to build world-class product. Sounds simple, right? <laughs> that's a time limit as well. That's, that's crazy. That's our challenge. Imagine like if you have to do it yourself, well, how would you how would you approach it? How would you do it? It's short time frame. We have to deliver a product. We have to train people to do it, and we have to train the trainer. That's huge. That becomes our mission. We need to build a good enough team in order uh, we need to build a team in order to build a product. Yeah, so we want to teach them how to switch and then let them switch and be kind of supporting. So, I don't want to read off this, but um, I think we, <laughs> fine. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> our approach, yeah, we, we know that technical is important, uh, user experience is important, and uh, we want to teach them, but because of the time that we have and the team that they want to build, 
So we'll teach them enough for them to how, know how to code, uh, how to build the product, and how to learn it themselves. But we focus on creating a mindset. Because we believe that a new mindset will change the behavior. And once we have a people with a new, new behavior, you can create a culture. And a culture will be the one that creates your company. Culture first, but uh, process will follow. So, the enablement theme. This is the three themes that we focus on. User experience, technical excellence, and cultural change. Hopefully it should be obvious from the stuff that we're talking about before. Um, we want to balance these three, we want to uh, be in the middle. Timeline. Uh, so we start off with a training to let them know why Aja. Why, they do, why, why people who adopt Aja do things this way. And then after that we have a process called inception which is talking about the product. Why, why do they do this product? Uh, how are how they going to do this product? And what they're going to do? And then we have uh, around two and a half months for the development, like doing real things. And then uh, we step out for a little bit so that we can come back and take a look uh, if they can move on without us or not. Because we want to make sure that they can, uh, after we left, they can they can be on their own and make progress. Anyone has been on something similar before, like in terms of timelines or whatever? Anybody have heard of Inception before? Defining products. There we go. <laughs> How do you normally define products? Right now. Can you define a product? A business model, model process that you can do. You can ask who are my partners, who are my customers, what are my cost structures, yep. uh, what might be the risks that I'm taking, what are the chances on those. So, this is six or seven criteria uh, process you can you do. Basically, you talk around everything, you try to, 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 uh, to do several workshops so that you can. Maybe have different scenarios for the product. Yep, absolutely. So um, I've been to that. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, one point that I want to bring up is: uh, uh, Are there a lot of developers in this room? Okay, uh, half. Good. Um, have you ever been in a product defining uh, workshop like that? Do you think there's any? Uh, do you think there's any benefits in you being there? I think you want to be there. One of the one of the underlining culture that we have to set is the vision. Developers needs to get where we are going, and defining product is one key uh, one key exercise that they should participate. So that they can contribute to the vision. It's like you're gonna order hot food, man. You 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 would want to order hot food yourself. You don't want someone else ordering chilies and then you have to eat it. That's the name of the team, actually. The yeah, next, it's actually uh, kind of the, the team name that the management named it for them. And they thought, oh yeah, when we adopt Agile, it's going to be faster. It's going to be 10 <laughs> times faster. Which um, is a bad perception, but it's good in a way that to achieve something big, you have to change the way you work. So if you give the name 2x team, maybe they can tweak this around, they can tweak that around, and they achieve 2x, and then they're not going to get anything new. So in a way, 10x team name, it kind of makes sense for them. So today we're not going to talk about the process, like day-to-day -day work. If you attend Jason's talk yesterday, it's pretty much the same of those. You can talk to Jason after this if you missed that. <laughs> <You talk. missed laughs> we have a lot of to talk, so we kind of keep it around. <laughs> so, but this was some of the example of the technical stuff that we drill into the team. 
Yeah, even though we said we're gonna give them enough, but we still give them a lot. We have a workshop on this high pattern, uh, different disinjection, and so we do pairing. We teach them TDD by pairing together with them. Uh, we develop trunk based development. Everyone check into the same trunk so that we can enable the continuous delivery pipeline. So once they check, once they checked in, um, uh, the code will build, run unit test, uh, deploy to the stage, staging server, running functional test. If it passed, we deploy to the uh, Amazon Cloud. And we also deploy the, uh, the iPhone um, app to S3 so they can download it and play with that cloud server. Uh, and we try to... Um, While he's explaining, we kind of don't want to answer questions at the end. We kind of want to answer questions as we go because these are complicated. Um, so if you have questions, we're not going to answer it at the end. So you better ask now. <laughs> if there's anything in here that you want to ask, please put your hands up and ask. Keep going. And uh, we try to automate everything as much as we can. For example, um, to set up the new machine, we have Ansible to set up the dev machine for you or the server machine. So whenever we have a new um, onboarding, a new people coming, you can just find the script and then you can get uh, your permission. We did uh, five versions in Project Rewards by two weeks. So like we've gone through a lot of iterations. Uh, we do user testing, we do Gorilla testing. Uh, we get like, uh, this guy here is the developer, and that's a UX, that's the business. So like everybody joins in, because everyone needs to learn about the user, uh, the user, the user experience mindset. Does anyone don't know what it is? Gorilla testing? One, yes, good, awesome. So basically, uh, it's uh, it like depends. That's a lot of way for you to get feedback, right? One of an easiest way is to actually get your whatever you're building, go down to place with lots of people. In this case, it's a coffee shop, and then just say, hey, can can I get you for five minutes? Would you try? Can you try using this? And we're just going to watch you use it. You can do it anytime. You can do it at lunchtime, whatever, and uh, you get your feedback from your customers. You can get to ask them, oh, right, you think that click does this? Uh, why? To get your feedback. And that's cheap, you don't have to have like a big lab or whatever. Uh, that's why they call it gorilla testing, because you're really just uh, waiting in the corner and pouncing on a uh, walker by. All good? Culture. This is the most important slides. This is the money shot. <laughs> it has to be fun. It has to be collaborative. You can see that that's the dev, that's the business, and that's the, uh, the user experience guy, right? We need to work together. They're not from the same department. In order to do that, in order for that to be collaboration, you need to be able to give free, uh, feedback Freely. That is the same environment. Trust. That's where that comes from. We need to build safe environment for them to trust each other. So that um, you can give a comment. Because otherwise people will only give you a good news. Without trust. Because they are afraid that the manager will fire them or they get something bad out of it. If and that gonna be bad for the whole team. So if you trust each other, if you have a safe environment, you can say, oh, I don't know this, I need time to research that. Or you can critique, I don't think this uh, work. maybe let's try this one. That will help the team grow. Value driven. What do you think that means? Data driven? You said data driven. Value, value. Value driven. Oh, okay. Pretty close, though. Yeah. What is like? What is data driven? Well, data driven means uh, you concentrate on measuring actually uh, success. Yeah. You just you try to find find okay, what are my KPIs or my my key um, values that I want to measure, like um, how much people are signing up for my process, uh, 
if the process has like a trial time, yep. how many people are actually using the, the, the tool within the trial time, are they forgetting it, uh, are they, will they never convert, so that's the churn. It's something that you can measure, right? Yeah, it's right. something tangible that you can measure. Yeah. Like that's the, that's the same as, uh, uh, that's the value driven as well. Like no, it's not, okay. so we're not up to the data level yet because we're not automating that stuff. Okay. But we do have, we do need to have that mindset in mind of like what you are doing needs to be measurable. So with value, you mean then actual numbers that you're taking care of, or we have a hypothesis, sir, and we would uh, and 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 whatever that goes through the development, it has to have an intrinsic uh, an intrinsic user value. Otherwise, it shouldn't be automated. And for example, uh, we pivot. Like five versions in two weeks because um, we, we make one UI and we thought, yeah, this is great. So we went down to that and we asked people, hey, do you like it? How do you use it? And we found that most of the people confused or you don't know how to use it. And that's, we consider a data already as well. And we, we did that uh, a lot until, so at the end, we get um, an outcome that, okay, we thought that most people understood it and they liked it. Um, Code optimization. I guess if you attend the game uh, Heroes Class, <laughs> you've probably seen it. Um, in fact, this team itself is local optimization under the whole bank. And we want to let them know that so that once they go on, on their own, then they know that they need to reach out to the rest of the organization to make the whole bank uh, change. Otherwise, there's gonna be another fast moving uh, thing on the slow machine. Um, feedback, we value feedback a lot because feedback is what makes you grow. It can be feedback on your friends on how you work, on your team on how you work, or feedback from the data, feedback on, let's say you give you a unit test, if the test fails, it's like feedback that, oh, I did something wrong with my code, I have to fix it. Um, do you have, uh, what else, feedback? They're everywhere. The, the, um, the faster the feedback loop that you can optimize, the better chance that you can improve and learn. So we try to make them optimize speed back loop and learn from that as much as they can. Any questions before we move on? And the last one was Kaizen. Well, yes, we are not qualified to be qualified to talk about Kaizen. Let's work it real hard. You know, about that. <laughs> Do you have his face on that? You're good at delegating. <laughs> <laughs> Activities. So, one of the way that we born is through human activities. <laughs> I guess you heard a lot of techniques and why agile, why agile is good in this conference in the past, yesterday and today already. So we want to show them uh, another aspect of how you build your team, a team. Uh, yeah, we run presentation, we have workshops, we do caring, uh, we have um, outing outside the bank, bank pub, um, we have one on one feedback. Uh, so this is like private, I, you and me, let's yeah. talk, I give you feedback, you give me feedback. And it has to be constructive feedback. For example, like, oh yeah, uh, I think you still um, walk a lot in your presentation. Maybe next time you should try to uh, sit down or, or like to make, walk uh, make them less distraction. distraction to the people. Something like that. It's not like, oh, you suck. And that's, <laughs> that's a bad feedback. And what when you have uh, one on one feedback, you compile it to yourself. You choose which one you want to tell your friend. And we call it 360 feedback. So you collect your feedback, and then in the same in the in the whole room, so you stand up and then you talk 
cut for others. Like, yeah, I got this feedback, and this is how I should improve it. And maybe it's you can hold me accountable, so you can help me achieve my goal. It's a goal setting. So like, you declare that I'm going to improve in this aspect. I'm letting you know. Get me, if I'm not. And to do this, you have to have some trust in your team first. You have to have a lot of trust. But after this, the trust level is going to go up because you know your friend as friend, not colleagues. You know that they, have to, they will have your back. So some other activities that we find successful, yeah, well, that is a book club. This is Thai, right? Like, this is Thai team. They don't know English. Uh, uh, so one of the ways we, is we get them to read an English book. Uh, again, going back to the Enterprise, back then it just came out. So we pick it, so we read it, and we, then we discuss it. And it can take 15 minutes in the morning every day. So we did this uh, 15 to 20 minutes in the morning before the actual work is done. It's like your coding exercise. Speaking at a conference, it really works. Like once you get the team's bonding, once you get the trust up, once they believe that they are uh, heading in the right directions, they want to share. So that get them onto the stage, get them talking to, uh, to, to a wider audience, really, really helps boost their confidence. For, for us, this is one of the tipping points that we know what we did work. Because we, we decided to give a talk as a team the day before the conference. And when we had the talk, the most two quiet uh, developers, they grab the mic microphone and then they, they start talking <laughs> stuff. Because they know that like it's the first time that they know what they did is valuable. And nobody like that, most of them appreciate what they did here. And that's why they kind of gain confidence and then crowd on what they're doing. Like, it's really great to see, like, he's the vice president. Uh, this is the back end, the QA, the dev, the business, the business, the PM. So, like, they are on board. Like, we, we, all, we all come together and we do this thing. And when, before that, one of the very effective thing is using game. Uh, why? Because game can give you fast feedback. It can, it's fun, and then you don't have to think about work. But at the same time, uh, uh, it bonds a team. It, it delivers a key message, the one that you want to tell. For example, like uh, self-organized team or the local optimization. And but it is important to debrief. Otherwise, you don't know why you are playing it. So hopefully uh, the game in the beginning to the to the to bring you in the state of mind. What did you play? You could go into any of these games if you ask, but uh, each of them touch on like aspects of the uh, agile that we want them to learn. Uh, there are many like Kiro invented one every day. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bruce has both passing in the past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> point game. <laughs> So we're not going to spot you on what these it's games fun. are. It's fun. Go look it up, go play. If, uh, you, if you read the roof, you, you will not get it. Even if you know the, the, the lesson, you will still not get it. Go play. In Thailand, we try to set up uh, a job game speed up. So every, every maybe, maybe a month, people come with new game. They can try it and they can share experience. And they learn something really fun. And that's going to lead to the psychology part. It's called four step of learning. Uh, I have less than five minutes, uh, six, seven minutes left. Okay. So uh, it starts with unconscious and incompetent. So you don't know what you don't know. Uh, thinking about driving a car. Uh, once you um, once we teach people how to drive a car, so you know, oh, ah, this is how to drive a car, this is how to start a car. But you're not good in it yet. 
it's called conscious incompetence. And many people refer that to aha moment, if you have heard about it. It's like, oh yeah, I learned something new today. That's aha moment. Uh, but that, um, you have to keep practicing until you're good at it. So this is you, you know, but you don't, you're not good at it yet. So this is, uh, you know, and you're good at it. For example, um, you practice driving every day, so you're good at driving a car. You practice coding every day, so that you know this pattern by heart. And once you know it, you're gonna go to, you don't know that you know it. For example, driving a car, today I would just, if I got to go drive, I just, it's, it become my instinct. I just go to the car and then start the machine and drive. Sometimes I don't even know that I'm driving and I'm like, oh, I arrived at the destination because it's become my instinct. So this is a full state of learning. And the game really gives you an aha moment. And once you play the game, you sh in your day you should have practice stuff that you try to deliver. Otherwise, people will forget about it. It's kind of related to the brain, like when you do aha moment. Uh, two brain cells kind of make a bridge together, but it's a weak bridge. So the fact that uh, the if you make it, uh, if you practice it, the bond gonna get stronger. And once it gets super strong, or the strongest, it's gonna become uh, unconscious competence. And this is the uh, the leadership. Uh, kind of, I don't know how to call it. It's not really about learning, but we think that uh, we, we, we lead them by example. Uh, so there are two axes. Uh, one is solution, problems, ask, and tell. Um, to coach, it's to ask about solution. To mentor and to advise is to tell about solution. Uh, if you focus on the problem, when you ask, you are constantly uh, for a problem and tell you manage, you direct, you 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 you, you figure out like what they did to cause the problem. So the approach, because we want them to learn, but they don't know uh, some of the uh, um, practice and uh, process. So we kind of mentor slash coaching. And then, uh, this is how you how this is how you bring up the leadership. If you keep uh, telling them and stick with the problem, then you only have a good worker, not not a ne next generation of leader. Anybody can tell me what the teams are practicing right now? Which moment? <laughs> Guys are working. Uh, thumbs up. Two minutes. All right. Lesson learned. So. You can um, read it. Well, yeah, many times <laughs> important. This is important. This is obvious. This is very obvious. But it really, really reads through. Um, we've got the delivery results. You can read that as well. That's not why we're here for. This is why we're here for. <clears throat> this is the metric that we measure for the enablement. And uh, as you can see, Tomorrow, we got a, a conference in Thailand, and the SCPPO, the guy that's been with us from the beginning, is on the keynote stage. That's it.